Surely I'm not the only one having issues with the blower motor on this Ford F-150. Well, for anyone out there that has this problem in their truck and they haven't figured it out or they haven't repaired it yet, I thought I would share this with you because this is actually one of the few things on a Ford truck that's actually easy to access. This particular one is behind the glove box. And I had pulled it out last week when I was trying to chase down the problem. And mine was death by corrosion. But I did find a replacement, and I'll actually provide the link. It's a WVE brand, and I believe I paid less than $13 for it, plus shipping. Got this from Rock Auto. And I think it's going to fix the problem. Can't be any worse than the one that was in it. So, but I'll show you where it goes. It's two screws and a connector. And for $13, you could get all four of your blower speeds back. All right, let's see if we can get this camera in here. Show you exactly where this thing goes. You can see there's a little slot there. It has two small screws. Um... And I believe they're eight millimeter. And that's it. It's basically a plug and play. And it's just behind the glove box. Well, I definitely thought this was worth noting. That part number that I'd given you all ago, or that was on that box, is WVE brand. I think I would probably attempt to get a try a different one. This one is rather poorly built. Notice on this factory one, which obviously is not a very good one either because it didn't last. Where the circuit board is attached, it's actually pretty rigid. My problem was corrosion. This one right here, and I'm not sure that I can do it with one hand, and I don't want to damage this one, but if you notice... See how much that circuit board moves inside there? This thing basically just sticks inside that AC box where the evaporator's at. And so over the time, that thing is just wiggling around, and I can actually feel it jiggling. Well, I'm sure you can imagine fatigue after a period of time is going to take this one out too. If I actually had some some type of adhesive or... I would probably try to put some dabs right here, mainly to act as a support and a, a shock absorber. But I don't have anything right now, and I'm not driving into town for this. I burn more in the fuel than this piece cost. So I might try to jury rig it some way and um, stick it in there. And the bottom line is, we'll see if this thing works. But if someone is actually goes to Rock Auto, Again, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd buy this one. It's a, it looks actually really poorly constructed. Kind of a shame because I thought the WVE uh, was actually a good brand. And possibly it is on other things, but this particular one is crap. It is an absolute junk. And the way it's made, it doesn't look like that this is just a defect. It just looks like it's a horrible design. But... Like most everything in this world nowadays, everything is, is made to throw away. So let me have my old cars and I'll be happy. I have no desire for a new vehicle. Only reason why I bought this truck is because it was cheap, it was close, and I can finish my house with it.
but I have no desire with anything on it that's got a check engine light. Well, I'm definitely not bragging on my MacGyver work here, but I really just didn't like how floppy that that circuit board was, so I kind of kind of went ghetto on it, and because um, I wasn't going to send it back for twelve dollars and get another one, and just trying to give it some support. All I need to do is last me a few more years. But if you'll notice, they're made very similar. See, there's that circuit board kind of slips in between these, these pieces of plastic. Similar on the other one. I should have taken a picture of it while I did it. But I had this plastic little wrap that came with my uh, trailer hitch. Pretty thin plastic, so I cut a strip of it out about a quarter of an inch and the length of this packaging and I actually wedged it in between the circuit board and those little plastic tips folded it over and then wedged it in on the other side also and it actually fit really nice and tight and it firmed it up a lot and so it didn't fall out because I don't have any kind of adhesive here I went to the old trusty duct tape that's holding half the world together and we'll see what happens. Worst case, worst case scenario is somehow or another down the road, this thing still breaks. But there's a coating on top of the circuit board. So this duct tape, any adhesive on there shouldn't cause any issues whatsoever. Because there's, you can see through it, but there's a clear coating on here. And I think it's definitely considerably more rigid. So maybe that will give us some longevity. Like I said, it looks pretty horrible, but under the circumstances, I wasn't going to return the part, and I had no doubt that this one wasn't going to last very long, as floppy as that circuit board was. So we'll stick it in there, see if it works, and I'll give you all a part number of what not to buy and maybe give you an alternative like the standard. I would have to call that a simple success. I know it wasn't much, but I know the previous owner has been driving this truck around for a couple of years like this, and I wasn't going to drive around like that. So I don't know how many other people might be running around with something like this happening and realizing it's only a few dollar fix in a few minutes. So hope y'all got something out of it, and y'all take care. <laughs>